Hello, my name is Jeremy Bradley. I'm with the Department of finno ugrian Studies at the University of Vienna. And today I want to show you how you can install or even create custom keyboard layouts in Microsoft Windows. For this demonstration, I will be using Windows 10, which as of the time of the recording is the latest release of Windows. Let's hope it's all going to work roughly the same way under Windows 11. If it doesn't, I'll make a new video once the time comes. Um, I will be using a number of online resources in this demonstration. Uh, you can find the links to all of these in the description of this video, so you don't have to type them off, um, off screen. But everything I'll be showing you should also be easy to Google. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, the first thing I want to show you is how you can install a keyboard layout, um, either one that you get from a trusted source, be it online or from a colleague or one that you create yourself with the Microsoft Keyboard um, uh, Layout Creator, which we're gonna look at later in this video. For this purpose, let me share my screen. Um, here we go. And um, so here we've got the links uh, that we're gonna be looking at. Um, the first thing I want to look at is the Copious Orthography Toolset. So Copious is a website where uh, colleagues of mine and I uh, from across Europe have collected a number of useful resources for people working with Uralic languages and also with other languages. And among these uh, resources, we've got uh, uh, transcription and orthography tool set, which includes a keyboard layout, which I created using the Microsoft keyboard layout um, creator. So the keyboard layout is here. And um, if in the manual, we get a, you get a, an illustration of where everything is on this keyboard layout. But let's try just downloading this uh, file and installing it. So all you have to do now is you click on this button here. And yeah, you save it. And this should go now right to my downloads. Let me see. Here I am. Uh, it's a zip file. We need to unzip it. In Windows 10, you don't need any special tools for that. Windows can do that for you. So we just say extract all to this location. Here we go. And here we've got the setup file. That's the installer for the keyboard layout. Before you click it, make sure that you trust the source of, um, of the keyboard layout, be it the website you got from or a colleague. Uh, in my case, I made this myself and I consider myself a trusted source. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. Uh, this is going to take a while because, um, well, there are all kinds of it. Windows asks you if you're extra sure that you want to take the risk of installing this thing. So yes, uh, the the publisher is unknown. Uh, what can I do? Uh, oh, oh, this is cute. This is new. Uh, it says don't run. I guess would be to install it. Why am I doing this wrong? Oh. Uh, I can't read. It doesn't say run away. It says run anyway. Oops. OK. Uh, problem here is that I already have the keyboard layout installed. Uh, so for me, rather than if, if I didn't have it already installed, uh, it would just you just have to click OK a few times, and then you'd uh, be done. Since I have it installed already, it got a bit confused. Why am I installing this thing I already have? So instead of installing it, I'll say that I want to repair the installation, make it as new. Let's see if this works. Uh, now it was still asking me if it is a trusted source. And uh, yeah, it says it's been uh, successfully installed. Great. So where is the keyword layout now? Well, if you look carefully in the bottom right corner, you will see something there that wasn't there before. A uh, little field where it says ENG. Uh, this is where I have my keyboard layouts. And currently I have two. There is the English keyboard layout that I already had before. And there is the Maori keyboard layout, which is actually this really clear uh, uh, keyboard layout. Uh, 
Why Maori? Because for Windows, every keyword layout has to be associated with a language that Windows knows. And I created this keyword layout for Maori and Windows does not know about Maori. So I uh, chose Maori uh, just because it has an abbreviation that looks like it could be Maori. Uh, this, it feels sloppy, but there literally is no other way to do this at this point in time, at least as far as I know. Windows doesn't know about the language, you can't officially have a keyword layout for it. But so yeah, I've got the keyword layout uh, now. And if I go into, let's say a Word document, I can now, my standard keyword layout is still the English keyword layout that I had before, which is actually not just an English keyword layout, it's a layout that I had, uh, um, that I had amended to suit my needs, but hello. This is my normal English And since um, it's designed to suit my own needs, I have some keys on it to have like uh, symbols that occur in various languages that I work with and um, IPA transcriptions and stuff like that. Okay, and now I want to type something in Mari. So if I want to do this the complicated way, I can click down here and say Maori, sorry about that. And now the keyword layout has been changed and let's see. So now I'm using the other keyword layout. And of course, this is, uh, this is a pain going down to the corner and switching yourself through, especially if you are in one document constantly switching between keyword layouts. Uh, but there's a shortcut that you can do it quickly, and that is Alt and Shift. You press Alt, keep it pressed down, and then press Shift, and that changes the keyword layout. So I'm now in English, and then I press these two keys again, Alt, Shift, and I'm in the Mari keyword layout, English, etc. So uh, that's it. Uh, if you have a keyword layout created with the uh, Microsoft uh, Keyword Layout Creator. Different developers might be using different tools and their installation interfaces might thus, uh, or the, inter uh, the installation procedures might be a bit different. For example, uh, a very important um, collection of tools uh, for Uralic minority languages are the Divun keyboard layouts created by um, the University of Tomsø. Uh, these are keyword layouts for Sami languages and they have their own, um, their own manager for these. So if you just Google for Divun keyboards, we find their website, we click on it. This is North Sami, uh, which, uh, not necessarily my strongest language, but you can up here, click on change language and say, I want this in English, let's say. And then we've got mobile phone keyboards, nice, and computer keyboards. Well, since I'm doing the Windows demonstration, let's go to computer keyboards. And here you have user guides that uh, show you all the details that you've got. And uh, you have critically this so-called the Divun manager. This is what you want to download and this is what you want to install. Spoiler I alert, I have already, whoops, this is the wrong place. Um, I have already in downloaded it and I have already installed it, but I haven't actually used it to activate a keyword layout. So once I have it in, once you have it installed, you open the Divun Manager. You should find it in your um, in your Start menu. And let's say, for example, I want a keyword layout on my computer for Inari Sami. So you just open it. You get this very intuitive, easy to use interface. And well, Inari Sami was what I was interested in. I click on Inari Sami, and I say Update and Install. I want to install two items. So it is now, it's also installing a spelling checker. Can't say anything uh, much about that. There's more information on the Divun website for that. And it's also installing the keyboard layout. And now let's see, what does it look like now? Okay, uh, you, uh, it didn't work the intended way for me. 
but uh, so um, but you can still get the it is still in the system. So if we now we have now installed it in principle, but it wasn't activated. Don't know why that happened, but maybe if I read the description uh, like the documentation properly, I would know this. But now I've got it installed, but I haven't got it activated. What do we do then? Well, now we want to go to the settings for the keyword layouts. And you can find these down here where we had my English and my Mari keyword layout. There is this setting here, language preferences. Uh, we click this and then we get to the place where we can, where we have our display languages and keyword languages. And now I wanna say, I want to add a language to this uh, to my to my uh, my computer with uh, the Inari Sami keyword layout, and this is a bit complicated now actually in Windows, and it seems counterintuitive that you have here languages, and then for each language you have a keyboard layout. Why do we have this? Why don't we just have keyboard layouts and just languages? Well. You could, for one language, have several keyboard layouts. For example, for Russian, there are different keyboard layouts used by different people with different needs. Uh, or it could also be that you are accustomed to using the Estonian keyboard layout, but you primarily use your computer to type in English. And um, various applications like Microsoft Word by default will uh, base their assumptions on what uh, language some text is in on the language setting. So if you were just to have then Estonian with Estonian, the Estonian keyword layout, every time you start open a new document in Microsoft Word, it sets the document language to Estonian, which might not be what you want to, uh, what you want. Um, yeah, and that's why, I mean, my English, uh, even though the keyboard layout is labeled as English United Kingdom, I have all the symbols on it to write, uh, German, English, Finnish, Hungarian, Estonian, Norwegian, and whatnot. But I have it set as English because that is most uh, the language that I most commonly use. And uh, since my operating system is in this, in this uh, language. And Microsoft Windows, unfortunately, off, it often gets strange with language settings. There's nothing uh, helpful I can say about this. OK, but in any case, let's get back to Inari Sami. We wanted to install an Inari. We wanted to activate the Inari uh, Sami keyboard layout that we had already installed through the having the Devon language report repository installed. So we say add a language. And what I wanted was Inari Sami. So let's type in Inari. And here we have Inari Sami. Please install, you know, activate Inari Sami. Now let's give it a moment while it works on this. And now here we go. Here I've got Inari Sami. And uh, so now where I previously had my two keyword layouts, English and Mari, or whatever Cyrillic uh, lang uh, using language you want to write with it, now I've got three, English, Mari, and Inari Sami. So English, now Mari, and now I am in the Inari uh, alphabet, uh, in the Inari keyword layout, and I don't really know this keyword layout, but you've got all kinds of things that you can use to uh, depict Inari Sami here. Cool. So uh, if we are tired of having the Inari Sami keyboard layout, we can also remove it by going back to language preferences, finding Inari Sami and saying remove, because this is not actually a keyboard layout that I want to be using. Let's give it a moment there. And it's gone. And it's also gone from the settings. Uh, a little hint I can give you. Sometimes Windows will add keyword layouts that you all don't actually want to use to your settings here. Like for me on my computer, it very frequently adds German Austria as a keyword layout. Because I am in Austria, I must assume that I must want a German keyword layout, which I categorically do not want. My keyword layout has everything I need for German. Uh, since it's my custom-made keyword layout, I even have like the Schaffes S and everything the German has is on my keyword layout. And uh, when this happens, it adds a language that I don't actually want, and I go to the language preferences. I can't reproduce it now because I don't have this bug right now. In the list here of preferred languages, it is not shown. So it has this phantom keyword layout that I don't actually want 
oh no, uh, now I accidentally clicked on something that is now going to make Maori my display language, which I don't necessarily want. And here you can already see that it has changed the date display. I clicked, uh, I did click one wrong button and now my, uh, the display language has become Ma uh, Maori. Let's see if I close it and open it again. Yeah, well, these, these are like, I just told you Windows can be strange with language settings that now for some reason, since I have a Maori keyword layout, it's, it has my language setting in Maori. And if I were to restart the computer, I might have a Maori user interface. Oops. But uh, so, um, but I was actually talking about a different strange thing uh, that Windows does with keyword layouts is that if it were now to add this uh, German Austria keyword layout that I don't want, and it's not in the settings here, how do I get rid of it if it's not in the settings here? Well, what you do in this hypothetical situation is that you, well, this hypothetical, very real situation, because this happens to me on occasion, is that I add a language and I say German Austria. I install it. I wait for it to be installed. Take a few seconds. Uh, it's already here. And once you have it in the list, click on remove to get rid of it again. And that will remove the phantom keyword layout that you don't want. So if you have something that is showing in your settings, but not uh, like on in the bottom right corner, and when you uh, flip through your keyword layouts, but it's not in your language settings, add it to the language settings, remove it again, and then it is uh, actually gone, at least for uh, time, for the time being. Okay, so much for installing a keyword layout. Now let's look at how we can create a keyword layout. And uh, the most user-friendly and accessible tool for this on Microsoft Windows is the Microsoft Keyboard Layout Creator. This is a somewhat old tool. It was not made for Windows 10, uh, but it is, for now there is backwards compatibility. You can still use the tool in Windows 10 and you can still install the keyword layouts you create with it in Windows 10. Uh, so it is the Microsoft Keyword Layout Creator, uh, abbreviated as MSKLC. Uh, you can either Google that or you can follow the link in the description. And uh, it'll get you to a download page on the Microsoft website. Here you have to download it for it to work. And uh, since it's not made for Windows 10, uh, it's not immediately uh, smooth sailing. You need the so-called .NET Framework 3.5 uh, for it to work. And like it, it tells you here actually in the description here, let me see, where is it? System requirements. It tells you that it needs a .NET Framework 1.0, but when you download the program start installing you, it, it tells you it needs a .NET Framework 3.5. So this is just bad documentation on Microsoft's part. Uh, but the .NET Framework 3.5, you can also easily Google it. And um, the first thing you find is, uh, should include a download link for the .NET Framework. Uh, and then you can just download it and install it, and then it will work. So uh, I'm not going to show this part of it because I already have the software installed in this computer and I don't want to screw things up. But uh, so you basically, it's, it's an installer. You just have to, you double click on it. You say that you trust the source, which is Microsoft in this case, and you say, okay, 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 until you have it run. And uh, you have to then do that both for the installer for the .NET Framework and for the Microsoft Keyword Layout Creator. Once you have it installed, it should be in your start menu. And let's find it, MKL, no, MS, here we go, Microsoft Keyword Layout Creator. So, and this is a, a surprisingly a, a easy tool to use. Uh, if you start it, it starts with a blank uh, slate. But of course, if you're designing a custom keyword layout, you don't want to start off a blank slate. You want to probably modify some existing keyword layout. So let's imagine a hypothetical situation. You are a, uh, a user of the Norwegian keyword layout, 
and you want to be able to type in addition to Norwegian, Latvian, Lithuanian, and Mari in uh, finno ugric transcription and an IPA transcription. So we need the extra characters uh, for these languages. So since we are starting off a Norwegian keyword layout, uh, like as users, let's load a Norwegian keyword layout into this. And that works by when we say file, uh, load existing keyboard is the right setting. And here we just have a list of everything that is on this computer. And you can see here, if you go down here, you will find things like Mari Jeremy 2019. This is actually the keyword layout that I'm usually using for Mari. I deactivated it on this computer before the installation. But so you, your own keyword layouts are here too. So you can also load those, the ones that you have installed and make modifications on those. But for now, we are Norwegian and we're gonna use a, just a normal Norwegian. There's here also Norwegian, it has a Sami letters. Let's just start with vanilla Norwegian. So now we see the, um, the different letters of this, uh, of, this um, of the alphabet. Um, sorry, of the keyboard in the base state, which is to say you're not pushing any keys to modify it. And we can here look at all the so-called shift states, which is what, what do all these keys produce if I press the shift button? Then we see that. And what do these keys produce if I'm pressing the Alt GR button? And we can see, ah, this is how we get the Euro sign on the Norwegian keyboard layout. What if I am clicking both the Alt GR button and the Shift button? Well, there is nothing there now, which is good news because that's free real estate for us when we want uh, to find places to put our different letters. So basically, if we are now editing this keyword layout, we can like, here we have ASDF and theoretically you can just click on the A button and say, rather than an A, I want this to be a Q button. Okay, but why would you do that? That's a stupid thing to do. Uh, but more likely would be that you might want to change something in the on the side of the keyboard layout where you have your special characters. Here we have the the ö, the a, and the o. That if you don't actually need the Norwegian characters, you could replace these with something else, for example. But if you just want to add stuff without taking stuff away, like in the uh, like in our Latvian, uh, Lithuanian edition uh, here. The easiest thing to do is just add values under the Alt GR button. So the same way you like with the Norwegian keyboard layout gets the Euro uh, sign with the Alt GR and E. Why don't I like make the lat get the Latvian S with a hot check on top with Alt GR and S, for example. So let's say, so we, we said that we want to have Latvian the Latvian characters. How do we know the Latvian characters? Well, you can go to just the Wikipedia, Wikipedia find Latvian, uh, find the Latvian alphabet and see what characters there are that, uh, that uh, you don't have on your keyword layout now. Be very careful though, that you only, that you put in the right code points that you don't, uh, that you don't like uh, post in a malformed character because uh, what you have in the keyword layout is gonna be in the results of anyone using this keyword layout. But uh, something that I consider more reliable than uh, just a random Wikipedia page where who knows who's been editing on it is the copious orthography tool set because we actually put some effort into quality control here. And we've got several things on this website that can help we, help you. We've got a universal diacritic helper where you can, for example, if you want to produce a U with a Macron over it, you put a U and then an M for Mac Macron in uh, square brackets, and it produces you a U with a square with the Macron over it in the correct Unicode uh, realization. Okay, but this still doesn't tell us what Latvian has. We were specifically interested in Latvian. Well, we have got language specific diacritics helpers for this specific purpose. And here we have Latvian. And if we scroll down here, it shows what the special characters are that we have to worry about when we're working with Latvian. And I'm just realizing I don't, I don't have to do Lithuanian. I've got enough on my plate just with Latvian and then some the IPA transcriptions. There's a reason why I want to have those. So uh, 
we have uh, these versions of A with uh, of all the vowels are is it all yeah of all the vowels with a, ma a macron over it uh, showing long vowels in Latvian. So what we do now is we can either we can click on outgr and then click on the A state to get that specific state. But what we can also do is we just do a right click on the A button. And we say properties of this key in all shift states. This is now giving you the master list of what this key does. And here we see it, uh, it in, um, uh, if you're not pressing OGR and you're not pressing shift, it's a small a. And if you are uh, pressing shift, it's a large a. And it shows you here the Unicode value of this letter and the character realization um, of it. Uh, in like in this case, we don't actually need the Unicode values, but these can it can be pretty useful sometimes. And you can post in Unicode values here, but you can also just post in the letter. So we have, for example, the A with the Macron here, and the the uppercase of it, and we just post them in, and uh, the software automatically creates the Unicode values of it. And if you're feeling uncertain, you can just copy this out, and you can. Uh, Google this and then see what it is. It says this is Unicode character Latin small letter A with Macron. This is exactly what you want. So you could also just copy the Unicode value from a code table into this place here if, if you wanted to. Okay, one thing, a, a small thing, but that uh, is significant that you should do is you have this button here, caps is equal to shift. What does this mean? Well, this means that if you press the if you press caps lock, uh, that it will always produce the uppercase uh, version of a letter, uh, which basically means the two letters that we have here that they are uppercase lower uh, lowercase uppercase counterparts to one another. Uh, if that is the case, we want to have this. The caps lock means that we have a larger character, uh, the uppercase character. You don't necessarily want this, for example, with the numbers. Um, th that's why the setting is even there. That if we are tapped cap lock, caps lock going, and we want, we are like, uh, yeah, I'll show you an example. I don't have caps lock. One, two, three, four, five, six. But now I put in caps lock and I say, I am now screaming, I am angry, I have caps lock on. And I want to type a number, one, two, three, four, five, six. The things I got with caps lock going here was one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six. It's not the same as what I would get if I was press, pressing shift, which would be the exclamation mark, et cetera. Because for the we for the for non-letter characters, we want we we want the the caps lock should not necessarily always trigger the same thing that shift does. So this is why we want this setting on for letters, but not elsewhere. Okay, so here we've got our A. Let's go back to our overview here. Oops, where was I? Here we go. So we've got a C with a hot check over it. We can also put that here, properties for blah, blah, in all shift states. And uh, whoops, I want to have the uppercase one here. And here you can see what consequences one little typo can have uh, when you're working on a keyword layout. You're sloppy once and you have an incorrect, a keyword layout that categorically produces a mistake out there on the internet. Okay, but here we've got our C. Now let's do the same with our E. Oops. Ah, here we have the euro value, which we are losing here, um, but it's not the only way to produce uh, the, euro um, the euro sign. But that's something you sometimes have to consider, like that, uh, it, that some key that you want for something might already be taken, and then you might have to be a bit flexible in, uh, whoops, in uh, where you accept having things. So here we have the G. Wait, did I do this for the E? Yeah, I did click that. Okay, then I. Okay. 
Almost there. Probably not actually necessary that I do all of these letters for the demonstration, but hey, hopefully it adds a sense of realism. Okay, here is our penultimate letter. And still have the Z. Okay. Now, um, let's say we wanted to, um, I mentioned that I would like um, to have like IPA transcriptions of Mari. I'm not gonna do all of it, um, all of this task, but there is a specific reason why I wanted to show that, which is, uh, Let's see if we have Mari and if we transcribe it into IPA, which the uh, copious orthography uh, toolset can do. And we have the Mari word kitche, meaning uh, um, a, um, the sun or day. And if we transcribe it into IPA, we see that this ch, ch sound that we have, it's an affricate. And in IPA, it is rendered with a T and a with this bow over me over arching. So it's basically, it's three separate characters, the two letters and then this, the combining character that we have here. And I don't want to have to produce this whole thing letter by letter every time I have a ch sound in Mari because there are a lot of them. So if I want to add this to the keyboard layout, let's see, where do I still have room for it? So the ch space is, uh, is gone. I can't use that. But yeah, where the T is, the, the T that will, I still have space under ArchGR for that. So I say properties in all shift spaces. And I say that if you have ArchGR or control and Arch press and press the T button, then it should produce and just copy in the string as a whole that we have these three letters here. And it will, it will say, okay, these are actually, these are three Unicode characters. And let's just for curiosity's sake, see what they are. It is Latin small letter T. That's what I thought. And then uh, Unicode character, the bow. The combining character. And then we have the Unicode character, character here. So these three that we have there, and here we could, in theory, since uni, since IPA does not have uh, lowercase, uppercase distinctions, we could put it in here too, so that even if you're using cop, caps lock for whatever reason, but it basically doesn't matter because you're not supposed to be writing uppercase uh, IPA anyway. Okay, so I've got this, and there's one more one more trick that I wanted to illustrate, and that is. So if we have, um, so this is something that the Norwegian keyboard layout already does, is if, um, yeah, so you see this, this, uh, this key here that, uh, had, that is grayed out. And what is gr the reason it's grayed out is that it is a so-called dead key. And dead key is, this is a terminology that still goes by, back to the days of typewriters. A dead key was a key that you pressed when the, where the cartridge didn't continue on. So usually when you type on the typewriter, if you imagine how it works, uh, works, you type A, S, D, F, and you type A, and the paper moves over to the left, you type S, the paper moves over to the left, and et cetera. With a dead key, this moving part doesn't happen. And it would be, for example, you'd have a dead key for diuresis or umlauts, the two dots over letter. And you would push, put the dead, press the dead key and that puts two dots, but it doesn't move the cartridge. And then you type an A 
and it types an A underneath the two dots and you have an A in love. And so you kept with the, with the diuresis, dead key on a typewriter produce diuresis and um, marked versions of all letters. And that's how dead keys work uh, in a keyboard layout too. And to get to the dead key settings, you have to do a right click here. You have to have it something set as a dead key and you have to have, then you can go to the so-called the dead key dialog. So what the dead key dialog is here, you post in what the individual, uh, what the individual, um, what should happen to individual letters that you type uh, when you are um, uh, in combination with the dead key. And now let's say, for example, this ver the, the version I was doing, what I was doing for the Latvian um, Macron that uh, you would instead want to have like that you have a dead key and that you press that and then it puts a Macron over, wh over whatever. We could do that too, that we could set um, some, we could set, for example, let's say, uh, how often do you need the plus up here when you have the, uh, when you have, um, when you have, uh, when you have a number pad on your keyboard layout, you say, okay, I don't care about the plus anymore. I'm going to set this as a dead key. Um, and we can call it Macron, for example. And we say then the base code point, this would be, for example, an A. If I have a lowercase a, then it should produce, uh, where's my Latvian? It should produce a lowercase a with a Macron over it. Whoops. Oops. Yeah, there. If I have an uppercase a, it should produce an uppercase a with a Macron over it, etc. And now theoretically, I would have to put all of them in there for it to be effective. So now I have this dead key and it's only going to work with the a. And well, let's say that I did everything with the keyboard layout that I wanted to, I'm happy with it. Before you actually produce an executable file that you can install, you maybe would want to test it out and you can do that. You can go under uh, project, test keyboard layout. And here you in this field are now typing with the keyword layout that you created. So, so this is all normal Norwegian stuff that I have here, but what if I press alt G R and C, there's my C with the hot chick over it, alt G R and A. There is my Latvian, uh, um, my Latvian long A. What if I do Alt G R and T? Here is the IPA symbol for the Ch Africa, which is actually then consisting of three individual symbols. And what if I press the plus button and then A, the dead key? Now I also have an A with the uh, with uh, my cone over it. So I uh, I um, produce the same result by different results. And what if I just push the plus button? And then I put something for which I didn't define a dead key value like a Z, but well, then it still produces a plus because I didn't change. I, in spite of having set it as a dead key, it still had the basic value of being a plus. Uh, in theory, if I wanted to be more thorough and I completely get rid of the, of the, of the, of the, um, I want to get completely get rid of the plus point. I could instead have a Macron as a combining character. Uh, I don't know what the Unicode code for that is. So let's say combining character Macron. A combining character is something is like um, uh, a character that is then attached to uh, the previous or the uh, following letter. So I could set this here, then the combining. Macron, whoops, as the basic value here. You just paste it in. But then you have to be really careful if you have the combining characters of Macron here uh, that we have, whoops, sorry, this is the wrong dialogue in the dead key dialogue that we have. Just to, to, to be a good example here, I'm going to put them all in. A, a, large 
here it comes. And the reason you should do this is that you don't want to have like an I with a combining Macron over on top of it when there is a Unicode code point for I with a Macron because that uh, that's a character encoding nightmare. Okay, E, O, the okay so this is the full extent of the actual macron usage in latvian we don't need anything other than this so if we test it again and we have plus a plus a plus e plus o plus u for all of these, we have uh, it has created the appropriate Latin characters. But what if we say, for example, a plus with an uh, an uh, the Norwegian ö? Then it has a combining Macron in combination with uh, with an an ö, which is going to look like an ö with a line over it. Uh, but it's not actually, this doesn't have a Unicode code point of, as a, of its own. So that's an actually two characters it has produced. But okay, let's say that then with all these changes, you are now happy with the keyboard uh, layout that you have created. You can save your, um, you can save your uh, project as a, as a source file. Uh, if you want to interrupt your editing process and then want to continue it later, and then you can at some point load a source file at a later stage to continue your, your project. But if you really want to install it, what you've got to do is you have to go into project and first go on to on, to, on properties. And this is the description of the keyboard layout. What language do you primarily want to associate it with? What is the default language to, uh, that you're going to use with this keyword layout? Let's keep it with Norwegian because in this example, you are still, um, you, are, you are a user of the Norwegian language, uh, the Norwegian keyboard who occasionally wants to type Latvian. Okay, copyright, let's say, I'm proud of my work, so I'm putting my name here. Um, um, a name, this should be then just a short name that is then in the installer file and whatsoever, let's call it, uh, no lat one. Oh, maybe lots. Let's not have the hyphen. I'm not sure if those cause uh, problems. And we call it Norwegian with bones Latvian. This is what's actually going to show up on the list once you have it. And that's basically these are the the settings we want to have. Okay, let's validate the layout. Let's see if I uh, had any, if there were any problems in creating it. There were not. But, yeah. Yeah. The log, that's, you don't have to worry about that if you're, uh, um, uh, if you're not a techie yourself. Once you're done with all of this, this is what you want to do. Build DLL and set up package. This then, once you click this button, this is now going to create all those files that uh, you saw in the package that I downloaded. It has created them. It has put them here. Let's see where they are. Here we go. These are all the files for your Norwegian Latvian keyboard layout. And if you double click on the setup.exe, uh, that's it would install it in exactly the way that we looked uh, at at the beginning of this video. So that's basically it for today's uh, demonstration. I hope this was in any way uh, useful. And um, well, uh, depending on when exactly you're watching this video, uh, I, I hope I am accessible to you with uh, follow-up questions if there was something that I didn't answer uh, in the course of this video uh, or that uh, didn't work the way I showed it for you. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to conditionally make this promise because it could be that you're watching this in the year 2259, but yeah. 
Okay, so thanks for your attention. <laughs>